It's been the talk all week around the American. College Game Day is headed to the Houston campus for the first time in program history. We're excited to now welcome in the Houston Chronicle's very own Joseph Duarte to take a deep dive into the incredible season the Cougs are having. Joseph, great to have you here in studio. You've been on campus at practice this week. What is your sense of how the team has taken the news of getting to host game day inside the brand new Fertitta Center this weekend? Well, you know, if it's a Kelvin Sampson team, there's still going to be that focus. He's not going to let them get too caught up in the in the moment. But at the same time, he acknowledges this is their little moment, as he put it, to shine. Uh, you know, you look at some of the blue blood programs around the country. This doesn't happen very often, if at all, at the University of Houston. So he he did tell the team earlier this week, you know, step back, enjoy it a little bit. But there's more business. There's another week left of the regular season. But you know, in his words, this this kind of means people are watching nationally and that Houston has now become a nationally relevant program. Since day one, head coach Kelvin Sampson has preached culture. How has culture translated into the product that you're seeing on the court today, five years later? Well, the culture begins with, you know, they I wrote today, they have a, a kind of a family atmosphere where it's very open door. Uh, they, they're like brothers on the team. And I know you can say that about a lot of programs, but this team, if you're around them, you really see it. And then as far as the culture, you have to buy in with Kelvin Sampson. There's two things that players say, if you don't do, you don't play, and that's defense and rebounding. So when Kelvin Sampson came in, it, it wasn't just, you know, installing his culture. He, I mean, he had to start from the ground up because this was a program that didn't have a facility in terms of a practice uh, development facility. They didn't have the new arena. He had about five holdovers from the previous uh, coaching staff player-wise. So uh, the culture has been from the ground up, and you've just seen it go up and up and up over the last few years where he's finally got everything in place that he wants. But, you know, Kelvin Sampson has his Kind of list of priorities that you have to do in this player uh, in this program to play and, and that culture is a big part of it we watched the evolution of this program year one no postseason and then back-to-back -back years in the nit and then last year second round of the ncaa tournament but in your eyes where has this program grown the most you know just the consistency when they when they got here you know they they felt that after that first year that this is a, this was a program that could challenge every single year for some type of postseason. But last year, maybe around the middle of the year, you could really see it. They 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 started to develop the depth. They started to develop players that were, were starting caliber that could play uh, at a lot of places. And then when they finally knocked down that door last year, it, it just it was the perfect timing because it all set up this year. They knew they were gonna have a brand new facility to open up this year. That kind of created the buzz that you're seeing now. So, and, and the remarkable thing, Haley, is that they, they did all that playing at other people's gyms. You know, they played elsewhere for over a year. They're on a 33-game home winning streak. So last year was kind of that, that okay, we broke through the door, and, and it really just took off this year because they, they maintained that buzz and kind of ran with it. We mentioned the Fertitta Center rather a couple of times, also the brand-new practice facility a couple of years ago. And when I had Kelvin Sampson here in studio with me yesterday, he really talked a lot about how the administration has bought into what he's trying to do. But having the facilities, having the winning, and having tournament appearances, how does that impact this program moving forward for Samson? To see where Houston was. You know, I remember at the end of Hoffines, they couldn't turn out the lights in the building because they weren't sure if they were going to come back on. So that should tell you right there, you know, there were leaks in the roof. Uh, they did not take any recruits on, on visits inside the building. Galen Robinson Jr., who's the, the, the oldest player on this team veteran-wise, they never took him in the building. They couldn't because that was not a selling point uh, to bring kids on campus. But now that they have all of this, it makes things so much easier. You'll, you'll walk into the Perkita Center for a big game, and you'll see them hosting players on visits. So they have the opportunity now. It, it hasn't put them above other programs but it at least has leveled the playing field and gotten them back into this you know facility arms race because at one point they weren't even a player in all this and now they can at least say that they have you know the newest and it's probably at this point should be the best because it's the newest but they have something to sell and they didn't have that vision a few years ago Kelvin also mentioned to me yesterday that when Galen Robinson came on his official visit that he didn't have much to show Galen other just some pictures and that Galen was going to kind of have to take a chance on them and, and try to buy into what 
Kelvin had envisioned for the future of this program. However, I thought it was interesting. He also told me that Corey Davis has been the best player on this team, rather, but that Galen Robinson uh, is the most valuable player on this team. Why is that? Absolutely. He's the heart and soul. You know, you look at what he does on the court. You know, he's probably, the, as Kelvin put it, one of the quickest guards that he's had in his career. Uh, he's a, a great perimeter defender. He's improved his, his shooting and his scoring ability this year. But just overall, he's an ambassador of this program. I think it's very telling. He gave us a quote last week where he said he came to Houston when it wasn't cool to come to Houston. And then we asked him, well, what are those people saying now? He said those same people that didn't think it was cool are now the ones asking for tickets to come to the game. So Galen, uh, well, there will never be an, a way to measure what a guy like Galen Robinson Jr. has meant to this program because he was there right after the 13 and 19 season and and he'll leave here probably with over at least 100 wins or more and I think that says a lot because that will be number two all time and we're talking about some of the great teams a five slam pajama and the Elvin Hayes days Galen Robinson it will go down as, as one of the most productive and in, maybe influential players that this program has had those who cover the American are already starting to talk yearly award winners will Kelvin Sampson be the coach of the year for two straight seasons well, if we're talking American, I would think so. Uh, I think uh, Brian Gregory from South Florida could also make a case, but uh, it's going to be hard uh, in any season that a coach is, is teetering on that 30-win mark. And then if you look nationally, uh, I think Kelvin Sampson's in that top three right now. So it could be a, it could be a really uh, kind of move that need to find some spots in his office for, uh, for some hardware coming up in the next month or so. Game day this Saturday, a chance to showcase a brand new arena, but pretty interesting because Houston has the nation's longest home court winning streak right now with 33 straight games. You've seen Hoff Hines, you've seen Fertitta. What is the atmosphere like this year inside the Fertitta Center compared to years past? You know, we had a decibel machine and we, we kind of, uh, well, I don't know what the word is, but we kind of try to, to gauge the, the noise factor, and it's unbelievable. It's such a smaller, intimate arena. Hoff Hines was real hollow, a lot of space, wasn't as near to the court. This place, you're right on top of the action, and I think that just brings it out even more. It's just, it's been fun to watch, Haley. It, it, they played, I believe it's seven or eight sellouts so far, but it gets really loud. And, and Kelvin Sampson was talking this week about, you know, he's happy for the alumni, the fans. Uh, for for the, the success the team's had. But he's also happy for the kids because this is something that they didn't do, that there were a lot of empty games that they played at, off lines, and to see the fans pack it in, to show the entrance, to be cheering, that, that's kind of another step in terms of where this program has gone. He's just happy for the kids that they've been able to play in front of these sellout crowds. Joseph, you posted a great video on Twitter this week when you asked Kelvin Sampson about moving up to number six in the coaches poll. And he said his friends are giving old Sampson some love and some votes there. But from what you can tell, what is Coach Sampson's true goals here in the final week and a half or so of the regular season? Well, we don't hear him look ahead too far, so it was really surprising uh, at the beginning of the week. He mentioned conference championship. Now, that's, you know, they're small pitcher. Uh, and, and at least they keep the, the big stuff privately. But he said, we have a chance for a, a conference championship. They, Houston has a chance to put a banner up on the wall. And I think that speaks volumes because it's been since 1992 in the Southwest Conference that Houston has won any type of share of a conference title. So that's what they're looking at because he knows they can't control rankings. They can't control seating. It comes down to what they can control. And if they win their next three games, uh, they, they win a conference championship. They can't control seating, but seating sure gives people like us something to talk about. And a lot of people right now have Houston projected as a three seed come tournament time. Where do you see the Cougs landing? You know, I think eventually if they run the table and we're looking at a 33 and one Houston team, I, I, that would normally put you in the discussion for a one seed. I think their ceiling right now is a two seed. And I don't think they're too far off from that. I don't think they would have to necessarily win the rest of their games, but they probably have to go pretty, you know, pretty close to that. So, you know, they're, they're right on that two, three line. And I think most of the bracketologists will tell you that, you know, they don't see them getting into that one line, but I think the two is, is a, a realistic goal for Houston. Well, Joseph, as always, thank you so much for your time. And for those of you, give Joseph a follow on Twitter. He provides some great coverage of the American, especially Houston. So thanks a lot, Joseph. We'll see you next thanks week for in me Memphis. On. <laughs> Appreciate thanks. it. Thank you, Haley.